Welcome to my channel. Welcome to this year 2020's premieres, uh, the launch of the premieres, and I hope you can join me. I talk for the next roughly hour, 50 minutes or so, and at the end I will put in a video showing all the contributors and, well, not their photos, but where they are in the world. So you can see how we're jumping around the world by all of the people that are volunteering to take part in this. So I am very, very grateful to the team around me. And hopefully channels that you already know, love and subscribe to. But if you don't, um, please feel free to subscribe to their videos. Please explore their channels at a later time. The playlist will be on my page. You can save that to your channel. I may say this later on in the video, but I'm saying it now. Um, so yeah, just please um, make yourselves at home in my space and in everyone else's space as we come into your space and time over the Christmas period, wherever it is in the Christmas period for you. Um, it starts off at midnight New Zealand time. It finishes at midnight Hawaii at the end of Christmas Day. So we go through 47 hours um, of trying to just give you that space to be safe in to have friends in and please drop comments after the fact if you don't make it for the live show um, so yeah thank you very much for joining me and I hope you enjoy my video and everyone else's yeah welcome uh, this is kicking off the premieres and um, I might be doing a separate intro so I don't want to be repeating myself but I'm gonna pop some drills down but I'm gonna show you this this has been in storage for a year this is actually a darn good yarn box. If you've been watching my channel for any length of time, you will have possibly seen me open a darn good yarn box of yarn. Um, I have flipped this inside out. I have repurposed it. And all my bags, when I finished making the Christmas tree last year, were put into Ziploc bags. I think they were maybe even in Ziploc bags last year, but the sticker has been put on the bag for the code. And the bag, drill number has been put in with it as well just because I think I knew I wasn't going to be finishing it last year. I will pop in a couple of photos showing you the tree in full and the glowing. So there'll be two photos. One was showing the stars glowing in the dark and one showing the tree. And um, yeah, let's get some drills down and <laughs> I'm not going to get this finished this year either. I don't know. But from a point of view of uh, sticky, everything is still sticky that was under the cover. The sides here where I cut out the Christmas tree, because that's how I did this. I actually trimmed the tree, I guess. I cut the plastic, so it's actually in thirds. Um, I had the tree as a separate piece. And I think the plan last year was to go up. I'll put the video in the eye so you can actually jump back to last year. Um, and there's another 47 hours plus of videos from creators there in that playlist. But I'll link the video and then I'll link the playlist. They will also be linked at the end too. Um, but yeah, so um, this was done and I finished the last day, Christmas day, on the star. This year I haven't done the advent lead up because I kind of feel I had the momentum already there uh, because people knew what to expect I suppose with the premieres so again oh might not have shown you this this is not something that you I'm not teaching you lessons but with the ziploc bag the easy way of opening is just to slide it along the runner and then you've got a little spout you hold it to the curved edge and you've got a spout now I don't need many of this color so I'm not going to drop out too many um, I think it's been a while since I have worked with round drills and oh my lord, they are such a pleasure. Um, they are really, really cool. But I do like working in squares. Um, 
the clarity that you get from working with the smaller squares is really cool. Uh, just looking for other X's and I'm not seeing them. All right. So, um, are you ready? Um, in in some ways, I'm hoping you're not watching this live. <laughs> um, it's late at night for a start on, I think Christmas Eve, my video goes out. Um, it's kicking off midnight in New Zealand though. And um, yes, I'm hoping that you're catching up maybe with the replay, but you're snuggled up in bed with people or animals um, and all of that kind of thing. Now I'm going to pop this one. I only need one of these so I'm only going to get one out of the bag. But have you got plans this year? Um, are you frantic at this stage? You might still be frantic if it's Christmas Eve over in the States and you're actually watching this. Uh, you might still be in preparation mode for uh, the family coming along. So. Christmas Day for me, uh, <laughs> I'm really not sure what flavour it's going to take this year, to be honest. Um, I will most likely be recovering from um, spine surgery, so um, I'm trying not to think about it right now as I'm recording. Um, and to enjoy my last weekend for a couple of weeks with full mobility, well, not full mobility, but with some mobility. Um, and then I will be recouping and doing a lot of um, shuffling around of videos, playlists and all that kind of thing from bed. So yeah, um, I'm not going to be doing the food preparation. Hubby will be, well, he thinks he's going to be in charge. He's going to be coming to me. He's going to be coming to me going, Pippa, do you want this? Pippa, do you? Yeah. So I'm going to be involved, but I'm not going to be hands-on. I know. For certain periods of the day, you would give them a bell. Oh, for yeah. certain periods of the day. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Which I right. may or may not respond to. Okay, so if I ring it too often, he's going to just ignore me and treat me like one of the kids. I'll, I'll it's going to like, I'm busy. I'll yeah. Yeah. And um, I might word up somebody who can go and flick the power off. So he goes, what the? Yeah as um, the computer drops out on them. Because I can't turn off the Wi-Fi. Oh, I could maybe change the Wi-Fi password on them. Oh, I doubt it. <laughs> the, the current Wi-Fi password is oh, ridiculous. Really, you've, got, you've got the information uh, to do it, but I doubt you yeah. know when it's No, probably not. Probably not. Um, yeah. Oh, dear. Um, it's too complicated. Yeah, true. And there are multiple access points, so you'd have to knock them all out before I found Yeah, out. and the problem is, I'm going to be at the other end of the house from the main Wi-Fi point, so yeah, I'm not going to be so able to knock out his Wi-Fi point. You'd have to be operating through the relay. Yeah, oh god. Ooh. No, it's all getting far too technical yeah. now. Dang it. I'll just have to get Sophie involved. And, and going, Mommy, Daddy, With stop fighting. fairly small oh, dear. I can knock out all of your devices. Yes, I'm Nothing sure he, I'm just sure he devices. just my devices. Yeah. That'll make me really grumpy. Unless no. I'm supposed to be sleeping at the time. Oh, well, there's an idea. I knock out your internet when you're supposed to be sleeping. Oh, well, I, I haven't been told I'm supposed to be sleeping this afterwards. This is better than fading the lights out at night. Oh. This is, it's just, <laughs> oh, no. Knocking the internet out at o'clock. Oh, gosh. Dear, I've created a you monster. 4G, you? Yes. Um, yes, I would. <laughs> the problem would be that if I'm in the middle of uploading when I'm supposed to be going to bed, then we'd have a problem. Um, because that's when the uploading tends to happen. Is like when I'm meant to be going to bed, it's meant to be um, stuff happens before I go to bed. Actually, usually it's up before I finally kind of go into the bedroom. Um, so I can update things because it's quite easy to forget that you've said oh I'll put something in the card and then because it's an after editing thing you kind of go oh was it this video was it that video yeah so if you've got lots of videos going up at the same kind of era <laughs> yeah you can get a bit forgetful um which is why I have said if I forget to put the link in please tell me 
you know if I do tell you that I'm putting something up in the eye and I forget by the time you get to view it it's like um it I'm sorry I just overlooked it so yeah um I don't even know I look I, I know we're recording these a fair bit in advance of Christmas I haven't looked up the weather for Christmas to find out whether we're in for a scorcher or just a kind of normal day the days are certainly getting warmer here um, which I know is all kinds of backwards for you guys in the States. Um, it was all kinds of backwards and arse about face for me being Irish coming to Australia. And when I was in WA in Perth, I was living just south of Perth for a year. Um, I, that threw me out even more because at 6 p.m. it was like the sun just fell off the earth and everything was suddenly dark and I'm getting grumpy because husband's not home and it's dark and former husband yeah the former husband um you know and I it turned out that it was you know six or seven in the evening and I'm kind of going oh this is so weird um how so yeah um getting dark of an Irish winter used to be like four and four to be kind of really you know pushing it um five o'clock it was you know black on a winter's day so Halloween it was even dark you know at 6 p.m um but Christmas yeah it was dark it was gray and when it got overcast I don't know everything just took on this gloomy chill damp air um, we sure as hell don't have that here in Australia. It's like t-shirts and shorts and um, t It can take a bit of getting used to and the problem is they um, They still do Christmas decorations and Christmas cards Like Ireland or England or even America. So it's snow in the Christmas scenes You get a few companies now that are getting more and more into Santa in a pair of board shorts surfboard kind of thing um we are getting that more and more you know what i haven't even gone to the shops this year for christmas prep we have a christmas tree uh we have the decorations so haven't needed to go buy anything can't i can't walk for long anyway at the moment um so going to the store to check out things that we really don't need because we've already got them just hasn't been a priority um, if I was still at work, I might go walking at lunchtime and that would be where I'd see what's happening in the stores or see what's happening in the street. Um, I'm not even sure they did a Christmas pageant. Nor, they call it a pageant here. It's a parade um, w around the city with uh, the Christmas kind of decorated trucks and cars and vans and all that kind of thing. And the police pipe band which actually has drums in it too but the police pipe band gets involved um a couple of other bands get involved um kids line the streets um one of the four runners actually maybe it's not a forerunner maybe it's somewhere in the middle of the parade throws the lollies out to the kids they also do that on the toy run they did run the toy run this year but I think they ran at the toy run because um, they're motorcycle riders and you can't really get much more isolated on a motorbike as you know, you can maybe have one pillion at a push. Um, and they usually have stuffed toys front and back or whatever, but these are um, collecting toys and delivering toys for the Salvation Army. They certainly had reduced numbers this year and um, the idea was that they then give these toys, games, whatever, to the Salvos, as we call them. And the Salvation Army, as a charity, will then assemble these presents for kids who don't have Christmas gifts this year. So that's something that I have been part of as a motorbike rider. Uh, it's all kinds of awesome being in a crowd of uh, 2,000... No, sorry, 4,000 plus motorbike riders. Um all convoying into the city at a f quite a slow pace um, and these people do not know how to ride together in a group uh, so it's all kinds of looking all around you pick your spot on your road and hold your mark 
um, as you ride in because when it first starts off you're very much bunched up there have been accidents where people come off at very slow speeds um, you know which is all kinds of messy they, you know because things break on a motorbike reasonably easy but um yeah there's that so at least that was had this year so you know a little bit of a familiar kind of sight on the roads we were out and about um i think an hour or two before it started kept on seeing these motorbikes and kept on seeing motorbikes with tinsel and it was like what the? and didn't put it together of course that it was the toy run day and it, you know as soon as it twigged it was like oh of course the toy run is on now some people bike riders don't like riding in these crazy packs and they will actually ride into the city on their own some people love riding in these packs and will actually start off from a destination further up like an hour up so they get a nice bike ride into the city um so yeah there's all kinds of different things they actually used to meet at a pub the pub used to be open it used to serve both I think beer and maybe a mulled wine kind of thing and this is like 11 o'clock in the morning you're meeting at this place um, the pub shut down and the last I heard was that the pub owner or le lessee, uh, lessee um, they took over the lease but for some reason they are just sitting on the pub the reason why I know this is my parent my in-laws live like we turn left at this pub to go to their um country town and it's just not doing anything and it's like why would you lease a pub and then not do anything with it like not make any money off it it's just i don't know bizarre but i got chatting i think with the girlfriend of the guy who did the lessee um somehow somewhere you know tasmania small town kind of you know <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's a whole state. Yeah, it's still a small town. Um, you meet people that know people who know people. Like, there is one degree of separation in Tasmania. Um, and it's funny, when Hubby and I do go out together, chances are he's going to meet somebody that he knows or went to school with. Um, even though he is now a self-proclaimed hermit these days. So, um, yeah, it's um, a little bit freaky. That Yeah, you can't go out without spotting somebody that you know. So... I don't know how people ever manage to have affairs in this country, in this state, <laughs> because, like I said, you'll be spotted. <laughs> yeah. All kinds of strange. But, um, nothing. I'm just saying everyone knows everyone and there's no secrets. That's all. Not, not saying anything more than that. Uh, I'm going to flip that cover so I can do some of this. All right, you ready for a break in transmissions? It's time for the Tubby Bunny Challenge. The Tubby Bunny. I can't even say it without marshmallows. Let's see if I can do it with marshmallows. All right. Sophie, say hi. Hi. No, you can't see your hand. Do it higher. Up there. Okay. All right. Welcome to the brown house. Um, Sophie has her chubby bunnies. We didn't get you to say chubby bunnies. Can you say chubby bunnies? No, say chubby bunnies. Say chubby? Mm. Okay. Mm, too late. All right. <laughs> <laughs> this is the chubby bunny challenge. Oh, we'll dear. go one for one. I don't like the strawberry, raspberry things. <laughs> chubby bunny. Chubby bunny. Mm -hmm. Oh, don't eat them in between. <laughs> chubby bunny. Chubby bunny. Very oh, hard no, not to eat. <laughs> Very hard not to eat them in between. Chubby bunny. Three. Chubby bunny. Chubby bunny. Mm. Chubby bunny. That's four. <laughs> Chubby bunny. Chubby bunny. Five. <laughs> no. Chubby bunny. That's six. He's got bigger mouth than me. Chubby bunny. Oh, you're chubby. <laughs> Say chubby bunny. You still keeping count? Chubby bunny, Seven. bunny, bunny. Chubby bunny. Ugh, drool. Chubby bunny. <laughs> oh my that goodness. Right. Mm hmm. Are you eating these? <laughs> mm -hmm. No. 
Was that nine? Eight? <laughs> Eight! Mm. Oh my goodness. Mm. Alright. Mm. Mm. So, these are the marshmallows. If you would like to join in the challenge, these are like an inch by, mm -hmm. yeah, that's an inch by one and a half <laughs> centimeters. So three centimeters by one and a half, two centimeters tall. They're not big. <laughs> if you would like to try this challenge with your, with your kids, please do. <laughs> Sophie's going to scoff the lot if I don't take them away from her. So hubby can have his chubby bunnies and marshmallows. Um, thank you for joining us. Cancel your hand, Sophie. Up, 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 up. <laughs> Bye. All right, back to the video. So yeah, I have no idea what we're doing Christmas food-wise. Um, it's it's going to be a surprise. Oh, I think we have spoken. There are rumors it's going to be a smoked turkey. Uh, I'm not even sure what state the smoker is in right now. <laughs> Hubby, it'll work. It will. This is the strange thing. It actually will. Yeah, what could possibly go wrong? Well, it's not as holy as it was. I don't mean blessed. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, Sophie's being a turkey. Um, it's not as holy as it was because we got rid of the um, tank that had holes. I think that's a minus. I don't think I put... Oh, I don't know. It'll be fine. Um... Last year, I think we discovered, sometime last year, we discovered that our ugly drum smoker, our oil drum smoker, had a massive hole in the bottom of it and it was, you know, leaking air. So we weren't able to control the temperature. Yes, 10 years, well, no, I don't know if it was 10 years of faithful service. I think it was a few years of faithful service and then it got retired until I discovered, and Hubby had been bragging about this for a year I think this um what was it um 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 bacon what was it bacon explosion. bacon explosion which was basically bacon around mince around barbecue sauce and barbecue sauce in it and on it and oh my god so I'm hearing about this dribbling and drooling because barbecue sauce is my jam and eventually I managed to get a bacon explosion a la hubby and it was like, what the hell is this? Oh my God, keep doing these. So I didn't get another bacon explosion. He made two the first time. He made them wrong. He, he should have rolled the mince as a whole and then wrapped it completely with bacon because he forgot how to do it. So that's fine. Um, so we actually have the second bacon explosion in the freezer that we have not eaten. I should probably crank that out this year. Um, so he started making um, smoked turkey and smoked lamb and smoked beef all in the slow smoker and this thing got absolutely flogged by me and my demands every weekend. It was just melt in the mouth, divine food, just, oh, it was amazing. So the, sm the slow smoker developed this um, craterous hole at the bottom and um, it, the drum needed to be retired there was no fixing it really so um, we went to the great expense of doing some checking and finding that there was a s okay um, of doing some checking and finding a source for oil drums okay say bye bye Sophie you go play bye bye go play um, of sourcing oil drums, we got four, I think, for five dollars each or something. Ridiculous. He threw them into the car, left, right and centre, when he could get the guy to be at the place to pick them up. Um, it was an old oil, I don't know, transit hub or something like that. And the, um, the things were for sale. We drained off the oil containers 
carefully. Um, we managed to get about five litres of oil out of the four drums for free. Uh, so this is like, we're already winning. We've got, you know, a, a bottle of oil for nothing and we've got oil drums that he's welded and put holes into where they're meant to be. He, the most expensive part for all of this was a Mustang exhaust, no, a, a Mustang throttle body. So it's a swivel head that he can open and close the valve to allow air in and out or in um, and create the airflow. It doesn't need that. He's, he was going to be automating this thing and the whole thing just got stalled in the process, but um, the concept is still there for him to be able to automate all of this. So, um, yeah, we're, um, we're going to have, you know, a reasonably new, but it was fun. We got some free um, wooden pallets uh, from uh, the local stationery, office stationery store. We threw them onto and into the car for a few days. Um, we brought them home, we broke them up, and we called the fire station and we said, hey, we're going to be making a fire on our driveway of some wood. And, you know, don't panic if anybody rings in from this address. And then we went to the oil drum and we put the pallets in and we lit them and it went... Kaboom! Actually, one of them went completely kaboom. It was like a nuclear explosion. It was as soon as the petrol gas well, caught. Right I was the one lighting this one. Yeah, and it it was like a sonic boom. It was incredible. It was so much fun. And then the pallets all burnt off, which burnt off all the oil inside, which made it so that we could actually cook food in it. <laughs> you know, even though the food's not touching the side. But that was the plan. <laughs> yeah, I know. Stop. My drills, go away. Go play with it's your own thing. Please. Hubby wants me to put a picture in of the current smoker. I don't know where the pictures are, so I will get a picture of the yeah, smoker. There's, I'm sure it's easy enough to find them. Um, so yeah, I'll put in a photo of the smoker. So yeah, there's that. And um, we'll have it. <laughs> Cold here in Tasmania, we have them cold, cold in pretty much most of Australia. I think people who do hot dinners. So Australians will say that they're having turkey and ham over Christmas. They don't have it hot. They don't go for the roast potatoes, the gravy or anything else. They actually have cold cuts, but in the traditional meats in a lot of the time. Um, so that was one thing I found was a little bit, you know, got to get used to the terminology kind of thing um because it was like hey, what my brother in Ireland would never repeat the same dinner every Christmas he has um from my point of view like I was a chicken and chop kind of girl when I first got married I didn't really do anything kind of you know too strange and startling um so for him to kind of say, oh, we're having goose this year and then we're having fillet steak this year. And then, you know, the next year would be, I don't know, he might have done a surf and turf and he would do veal or venison. And I'm kind of thinking, where do you even get this stuff? Like, that sounds way too exotic for, you know, my little old hometown butcher. I'm sure the butcher had it. You know, he was living in the south of Ireland, um, a bit further south than Rachel does. Um, and, you know, he had two kids that he was bringing up on all this fine fare. And um, me, I was probably doing what we call a turkey buff or a turkey buffet. Um, basically, it's the chicken breast um, on the bone and no legs. I don't know what um, other countries would call that particular cut of meat. Um, but that's uh, what we would see in the supermarket when I was working there. So the turkey buff was... Um, quite common for smaller households, people who didn't like turkey legs. Turkey legs really need to be cooked well um, to be nice because of the sinews in the legs. If you don't cook them, the sinews are a pain in the backside. The thighs are nice, but the legs are a pain. So um, yeah, they would be the, the less favorite piece, even though they look awesome as a big, you know, hank of drumstick. Um, yeah, they, the sinew is a bit kind of no don't don't really want to 
tangle with that big piece of sinew through the legs. Um, strong old birds to uh, have that um, ligament in them. But, um, yeah. So, smoked turkey. I think we actually have a ham in our fridge from last year. I don't think that's going to be any good. We just... we Oh, for more than two years? We, we bought it last October, November. It's vacuum sealed. We've just never touched it. I don't know. It's probably just scared us. It's, you know, three kilos that we actually need to just give to the dog or throw in the bin because it might not even be safe for the dog. I don't know. I, that salt actually wouldn't be good for the dog. So no, it's not going to go to the dog. It's just going to go in the bin if we ever crack it open and see if it's safe. It's preserved. I mean... They, they used to preserve these things back in your days of yore. I don't know if they would have eaten the, this quite far away from manufacturing date, though. Oops. Um, yeah. <laughs> Slight, slightly scary. Dear. Um, so, yeah, and I used to do the salads. The salads are all going to have to be handled by his nibs. Um, I'm not giving him my family secrets. I No, I don't know. So it might be packet salad. I won't have done coleslaw. I can and will be mobile for very small periods of time, but I need to be kind of careful not to lift and, and stuff. And I have now worked out um, things that I, I mean, I could definitely direct him to do chopping and preparation of the vegetables. And I then come and sit and well, no, sitting is the problem. It's actually the stirring might be the problem because there's, you know, forces moving, stirring, that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, I might even have to direct the process making and then just be there as the taste tester like I used to be for my dad. So, um, yeah, haven't found my Christmas cake. Oh my goodness. I haven't found my Christmas cake. Um, I don't know if my ex, my kids were never brought up on Christmas cake. Again, they never liked the fruit cake, so I never had them. My mum used to make Christmas cake all the time with the marzipan and the icing. Um, so I, I think hubby actually likes it. So I, I think, no, he's, he's been brought up on it because of his family history. His, his grandmother was a CWA goddess. Um, CWA in Australia is quite a big deal. So, um, yes, uh, <laughs> she would have she would have had all the criteria for the fruitcake and she would win prizes for hers and all that kind of thing. So um, I might be able to get something that's a little bit bigger than just a single serve Christmas cake um, because that's all I want. I really just want a single serve. I found these awesome little Christmas cakes. So they were literally four inches by four inches by four inches cubed. And they were for sale by my local supermarket. Um, when I was in the city yeah. for work. So I think I just bought it for myself just to be able to have. Um, I have my Irish brown bread to make. I've got the flour mix. So again, Marcus will have to do that. There's nothing to it though. It's not like you have to knead Irish brown bread. Um, you just mix it, make it into the dough and throw it into the oven. It doesn't need rising or anything fancy for it whatsoever. And smoked salmon. Um, that's smoked salmon on brown bread whoa that's that's my thing but hubby doesn't like raw fish doesn't like fish so again have to be more kind of careful when it's taken out that it's resealed that it doesn't stick the fridge out for a start um that kind of thing so that he isn't put off um his food but um they are the things that i want for christmas time i usually make um a chocolate ripple cake which is the chocolate biscuits um, from our maker Arnott's here. It's just a hard chocolate biscuit that looks like a ginger nut ginger snap. And I interleaf the chocolate ripple with ginger biscuits. So it has that ginger flavor and the chocolate. And then they're dunked in orange juice, real orange juice and cream slapped on and they're put into a, like a log and um, they are delicious. So um, I might get the kid to be able to do that if she's with us for preparation. Um, they, again, it doesn't keep long either because it's cream. 
Um, don't need to make much. So again, these could all be made made quite small, whereas I kind of make, you know, two packets worth or three packets worth. So we could maybe make minis. Um, otherwise they won't get it eaten. Um, yeah, so there's all of that kind of thing. It's Sophie's, you know, first Christmas that she's kind of conscious about and she's chattering about. So um, we've got more of a big deal with her. Um, unfortunately, I think the swap over with the stepkid means that we lose her Christmas afternoon for the 24 hours and then she's back to us for the rest of the week. Um, so, yeah, there'll be a bit of a break in proceedings that we'll need to, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know what we're going to do. We don't really watch much TV here. So, um, yeah, we'll, um, we'll figure it out. We watch movies, all right, but we don't watch Christmas TV. Um, so I don't even know what movies are on. Um, that was another big thing in Ireland, England. Um, they didn't run ads on Christmas Day, and they rang the... Normally movies would be at least six months old, getting to the TV, having been in the theatres. Um, so the the new releases over the Christmas period were like box office hits, you know, they were really good movies. I have no idea what's happening with movies this year. Um, but if you're in the um, Ireland, UK, yeah, they, they were ad free for the 24 hours, um, kind of Christmas day and then Boxing Day. There would be like back-to-back -back movies. It was brilliant from, from a kind of being able to just switch off and, you know, kick back and wallow in your Christmas uh, feasting uh, and that kind of thing. And because of my family being slightly scattered, we might not have Christmas Day on Christmas Day. We might, you know, have a family get together on another day throughout the Christmas period. Um, whenever people could get up from the south or, you know, just weren't doing Christmas with their kids on Christmas Day. So I think my dad is going to my sister's. Um, my other sister will be, no doubt, keeping in touch with him. They, like, they're all pretty close over there. And dad is 93. I don't know if they've got big lockdowns this year for Christmas. I think what they're talking about is releasing the lockdowns for the Christmas and then putting it back down again once people have passed COVID on to everyone else. Um, yeah, we fortunately in Tasmania, um, well, we've got four cases in the state, but they were blow-ins from India. Um, I'm, I'm assuming they're Australians or Tasmanians even returning back to Tasmania. So they were in quarantine. They were already segregated and the mum and I think two of the kids developed at first and then the husband tested positive um so yeah you know we can't say we're completely clear but we certainly don't have active cases and even the rest of the states in australia we've got really really good numbers melbourne's got its ass together their lockdowns were so severe that it really nipped it in the bud but it took a good four weeks to do it and now the numbers are much more manageable um there was talk that um in new south wales one of the um one of the hotel workers i think or quarantine people they'd caught covid and they had been on the train but again there were no transmissions i don't think from that so um yeah our our numbers in australia are actually really good so from that point of view you kind of you have your get togethers with your family and you can be safe in knowing that you're not necessarily bringing it to loved ones. Whereas I think there's just that bit of doubt, like, um, you know, you can't see the virus. It's not like, you know, that you're passing it to Uncle Tom, and you know, Cousin Jerry. So um, I understand that people may be kind of going, no, we're not going to get together with family. So that is sad. But I think for the safety of your family, I think it's got to be done, unfortunately. And there is always technology. Well, you hope there's technology um, that people get to FaceTime more and, you know, talk to each other on the phone more. Um, if um, they've got those abilities. So I hope you have connected or will connect with people that you love, whether it's through 
the premieres, um, which are going to be rolling through, or whether it's through, um, I don't know, writing a letter, dropping a phone message, whatever it is that you can connect. Um, yeah, I hope you get to be able to do that with your people. Or your pets. Um, you know, because pets are family too for a lot of people. So um, I hope you have that time. Um, yeah, and oh God, here's hoping 2021 is going to be better for most people. Because this year got crazy. Um, it's really hard to make plans. You know, I know people are kind of talking about summer holidays and and things like that at this time of year and it's like what are you going to do and where are you going to go and the the plans start ramping up new year's resolutions start happening um i know the world is a different kind of place at the moment so yeah um still good to make plans i think uh still good to have dreams have hopes um i think we'd be lesser as a human not to be looking forward hopefully to something new and um, whatever shape that might be in um, maybe it's a new phone maybe it's you know a new piece of technology that allows you to talk to certain people maybe it's reconnecting you know with old school letter writing i you know sky is the limit so um i hope that happens um Yeah, I'm just going to beetle on with this as I can. Um, won't be doing any diamond painting while I'm in recovery because of the way that you've got to sit to do diamond painting. Um, but that's okay. I'll be stitching. I'll be knitting. Um, I'll be stitching more than anything. I'll be knitting more than, you know, than anything. And I'll be reading. I'll have my Kindle. Um, and I'll probably be sleeping if anything is to go by or snoozing and watching movies and it was funny Sophie actually got into bed next to me this morning propped herself up on the pillow lay down on the blankets put her iPad up her iPad my iPad up on her knees and um, you know just chilled with me for a few minutes and it's like yeah I can do this I, I, I can recoup like this you know with Sophie coming in and checking in on me <laughs> um, yeah We'll wait and see, and um, yeah, hubby will probably get sick of making me tea. I'll probably be on rations for tea because <laughs> he's not going to be making me tea every five minutes. I think it probably takes me an hour, and this tea is cold, stone cold. So yeah, oh, I know it's it's such a trial. Um, yeah. Mummy, what's this? What is that? It's a roll of cardboard. You, don't be eating it. What? Don't eat it. No, 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 no. Somebody else is their dog at toilet paper rolls or kitchen rolls or something. I want to be Jeremy with Trapper. Um, I said maybe it's the glue in the paper roll. Because I know in Ireland there used to be, um, when we had stamps that you had to lick, some of the stamps and some of the envelopes had a really sweet glue. It was really quite nice. And then you get the others and it's like... <coughs> and you're trying to clean your tongue afterwards. Yeah. Yeah, Cockatoo was eating them. Yeah, don't give cardboard to your pets to eat. Um, not glued cardboard. Well, all cardboard is probably glued... Um, in a kind of roll, but yeah. Anyway, keep yourself safe. Um, Lynn is always sending me videos on Instagram of, um, I think they're called Sticky Frogs, I think is the name of the handle. They are tree frogs, and this owner has green tree frogs, white tree frogs, and there was some other name that she had. Bulbasaur was one of them and apparently Bulbasaur doesn't like the water spray and he'd get grumpy and then there was another one that or maybe it was Bulbasaur that um, would only respond to the merp that the owner would make and then he'd merp back at her um, one of the other frogs was like the water spray don't you spray me and started ribbiting at them because they were spraying them 
it was all kinds of cute so it's like Lynn keep it up I love them um I Tasmania doesn't have any um green tree frogs that I know of we've got frogs and they're noisy because we've had one outside the window but they're like an inch and a half no can't imagine them being terribly um wet enough to well maybe in the rainforest they could handle frogs I don't know. I remember being at a frog farm. Some guy had some kind of reserve -y thing in his home in uh, Mandurah that we went and visited and he was playing videos of all these different frog calls. It was fascinating. Um, but no, I haven't seen anybody quite as fro crog, <laughs> frog crazy here. Um, yeah. Um, and I do really like frogs. We used to have frogs that would get stuck on the window in my previous home. Um, and they're tiny, like they're really like an inch, an inch and a half long, um, getting stuck on the window. Occasionally the cats would bring them in and they'd be stuck on the inside of the window. Um, and yeah, they'd just get released, but they were all kinds of cute. So yeah, I love frogs and sticky toes and all that kind of thing. It's cool. Um, yeah. So not even the dog is going to have um, a fancied up Christmas bow or anything on his kennel. No. Christmas tree is up waiting tonight. The kid will be able to decorate the Christmas tree when she gets here. And um, that will all happen and make it all kind of come alive for Sophie. Um, like the tree is up, we've got the lights on. That's probably the fussiest bit that I would be worried about. Maybe the tinsel might get fixed. But last year, I think she was doing it with her big sister. So um, uh, it probably wasn't quite to my liking, but I left it anyway. Um, you know, they did a, a fairly good job with it because there was a little bit of direction. But after that, it was like, OK, we're backing off. It's your tree. <laughs> but this year it's a real tree. Um, I tell people, tell you about that in my vlogs. If you're interested, um, go check out the vlog playlist that I may even link in the eye if I can remember. Um, but check out my vlog playlist if you're interested. All right, as for the rest of the premieres, there are 46 people following me, okay? Now, if you're watching me live in the premiere, it's, I think it's 10 o'clock at night for me. I will probably be there, hello, you know, chatting with you. Um, and if not, uh, chat away amongst yourselves when, you know, I'm saying this when the video's already, you know, mostly over. Yeah. Um... So I hope you've enjoyed yourself. Save the playlist to your channel and it will bring you from one video into another anyway. Um, if you've got that playlist saved, it will play through. If you're not available for all of the hours, please, please, please get some sleep. Spend time with your family. We'll be there on replay. And you will have 2019's premieres as well. That's another 47 plus hours. You've got a lot of watching that you can do. Um, if you're watching last year's, I can say for certain, go and watch Michelle um, Creative Mayhem's video. It was hilarious. It's jokes and silliness and all kinds of things. So, oh, and Ashley and Kerwin did Christmas wrapping last year. It was Kerwin's debut. Um, this year, people are gonna be doing the Chubby Bunny Challenge. So you will see people making funny fools of themselves with marshmallows, nothing, that hopefully anyone is going to die from, thankfully. Um, so yeah, I mean, have some fun. Please connect with your people, your people and your online people. Um, I really, really hope that you have a safe and blessed Christmas. Um, and yeah, just be there for one another. Um, love one another, uh, whether it's virtually or physically with all your people in your um, in your life. So. I will see you in other videos. I'm sure you will see me in other lives or if it's replay, drop me a comment. Let me know that you've dropped in for the replay. Um, let me know how you're going over Christmas. And if there's anybody that you would like to talk to, I know um, I would be there for you in a heartbeat, but most of the creators would be there for you in a heartbeat. So please reach out if there's something that you are struggling with. and. Um, as I've been saying to my creators in the premiere, there is no dumb question. So please ask questions. If you've got questions, please ask questions. What? Uh, no. 
There are no dumb questions. There is no dumb question. Mm, yes. Oh dear. <sighs> my peanut gallery, as I'm calling him in my vlogs. Yeah, look, um, please ask the questions, drop the comments, like the videos, subscribe if you're not already a subscriber to these channels. There are new creators this year who you would not have seen last year, who may have been watching last year that we were only just getting to know. So please have uh, an open and generous heart and, you know, be there for the other people too. You might be the person that they need to hear from this year as well. So I really, really hope that um, we're all able to be the person that each other needs, um, I guess. Um, and just be there for each other, you know, brothers and sisters and all that kind of thing. All right. Look after yourselves. Please, please, please stay safe. And I will see you in other videos. Bye for now. Take care. May the road rise up to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face and the rain fall soft upon your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hand.